In this lecture, we're going to be talking about the most important part of macroeconomics. We're going to be looking at aggregate supply and aggregate demand. A couple of things that we're going to look at are aggregate supply, obviously, and obviously aggregate demand. But we're also going to be taking a look at some macroeconomic trends that have been found in the past couple of years and a couple of schools of thought because not everybody agrees on the principles of macroeconomics when it comes to aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Let's start by taking a look at aggregate supply. The quantity of real GDP supplied is the total quantity of goods and services valued in constant base year dollars that firms plan to produce in a given period. Constant base year dollars means that we're looking at real GDP and not nominal GDP. The quantity depends on the quantity of labor, physical capital, human capital, and technology. But capital and technology are said to be fixed at any given time. The labor market can only ever be in three states. We can be at full, empl un full employment, which means that the quantity of real GDP supplied equals the potential GDP, below full employment, where the quantity of real GDP supplied is below potential GDP, and above full employment, where the quantity of real GDP supplied is, equal, is, is above potential GDP. Aggregate supply is the relationship between the quantity of real GDP supplied and the price level. And everything that I've just mentioned in terms of the labor market, we'll see how that checks out on a graph a little bit later in the lecture. But basically, the point of this slide is to show you that when we look at aggregate supply and aggregate demand, we're going to be comparing the price level on the y-axis with real GDP on the x-axis. The long-run aggregate supply is the relationship between the quantity of real GDP supplied and the price level. When the money wage rate changes at the same pace as the price level to maintain full employment, the quantity of real GDP supplied is equal to the potential GDP, and that is equal to the level of full employment. This quantity is the same regardless of the price level, which you can see because the curve is a vertical line. Long run aggregate supply is vertical because as the general price level increases, the prices of factors of production will as well in the long run. They will increase as well in the long run. So real GDP does not really change with the increase in the price level. Short run aggregate supply, on the other hand, is the relationship between the quantity of real GDP supplied and the price level when the money wage rate, the price of other resources, and the potential GDP remain constant. In the short run, a rise in the price level does bring an increase in the quantity of real GDP supplied, and that's why short run aggregate supply slopes upwards. The real wage rate is at equilibrium where short run aggregate supply intersects long run aggregate supply, as we can see on the graph. An increase in potential GDP will bring about an equivalent increase in the short run aggregate supply, and for our purposes, we're going to be assuming that the full employment price level remains the same. Potential GDP might increase due to an increase in the full employment quantity of labor. Um, potential GDP also increases if the quantity of capital increases, and this includes human capital as well. We can have advances in technology that also increase potential GDP because technology enables firms to produce more quantity of goods and services from any given amount of factors of production. It's considered the most important source of increased production. Short-run aggregate supply will also change in response to a change in the money wage rate. When the money wage rate changes, or any other factor of production, um, for example, uh, cost of oil, oil or raw materials, if that changes, the long-run aggregate supply remains unchanged. That curve does not shift. An increase in the money wage rate, for example, shifts the short run aggregate supply curve to the left. This increases uh, this increase in firms' costs, and so the quantity supplied at each price level will decrease for all firms. Unemployment above the natural rate puts downward pressure on the money wage rate, and below the natural rate puts upward pressure on the money wage rate. An expected rise in inflation makes the money wage rate rise faster, and an expected fall in the inflation rate slows down the rate at which money wage rate rises.